Hello, I'm Alexander and today we're talking about SMSL RAW MDA1 desktop deck and headphone amplifier. RAW MDA1 is based on dual ESS ES9039Q2M deck chips and 6 OPA 1612A op amps. It supports PCM decoding up to 768 kHz at 32 bits as well as DSD512 and MQA. The device has both 6.3mm single-ended and 4.4mm balanced headphone outputs and provides 25 watts of output power at 16 ohms and 1.7 watts of output power at 32 ohms. Besides that, it has a Bluetooth 5.1 connectivity, supports a lot of codecs including LDAC, and in addition, it has four digital inputs and a built-in power supply. There is a lot to explore, but let's start with the unboxing first. Device comes in a large carton box and there is a branding and model name on the front of the box. Inside the box we have SMSL RAW MDA1 desktop deck and headphone amplifier, power cord, USB Type-C to Type-A cable, Bluetooth antenna, a remote control, user manual and a warranty card. The device has a body made from anodized aluminum and it feels solid. The finish looks and feels great too. The length of RAW MDA1 is 189 mm, the width is 179 mm and the height is 45 mm. The unit is quite hefty and it weighs 1 kg. The metal casing gives it a sturdiness and the ability to shield the device from external electromagnetic interference. On the front of the unit there are 6.3 mm and 4.4 mm headphone outputs a large color display protected by tempered glass and a volume knob. On the back of the unit there is an XLR balanced outputs, RCA unbalanced outputs, two coaxial inputs, two optical inputs, a Bluetooth antenna socket, a USB Type-C connector, power socket and power button. On top of the unit there is a little RAW MDA1 sticker. And at the bottom of the unit there are four rubber feet. Overall, the unit feels very solid and I am pleased with build, product design and choice of materials. The remote control that comes with the unit is SMSL's RC8C that also comes with some other SMSL products too. It has a power button on top, followed by menu navigation buttons. Then we have a source selection button, the function button that I used to switch between headphones and line outputs and a mute button. You can also assign a different function to the FM button and you can do it from the main menu. And finally we have volume buttons that change the volume in the 0.5 decibel steps. Now let's talk about technical specifications. Total harmonic distortion is 0.00005%, signal to noise ratio is 132 dB for XLR outputs, 127 dB for RCA outputs and 122 dB for the headphone outputs. The output impedance for line outs is 100 ohms and the output impedance for headphone output is near zero. If you are familiar with SMSL products, you already know that they have excellent measurements. And RAW MDA1 is no exception. According to the specs, the maximum output power is 1.7 watts per channel at 32 ohms and 2.5 watts per channel at 16 ohms. These are very impressive figures and this unit will probably drive 95% of the full-size headphones currently on the market. RAW MDA1 can decode PCM 768 kHz at 32 bits as well as DSD-512 and MQA. It's also mentioned that it supports MQA CD technology, which in my understanding is a way to unfold the digital stream coming from the external CD player and MQA CDs, which I personally never had any experience with, so I'm looking more into this functionality. The Bluetooth input supports SBC, Aptex, Aptex HD and LDAC, so SMSL got us covered. I was mainly testing the unit with my machine running Windows 10 and I was using Rune for flag files and Tidal for the streaming. Setting up the unit is really easy, just download the latest drivers from SMSL, connect it and you're ready to go. Now a few words about functionality. RAW MDA1 is mostly a plug and play device. 
but there are some options that you can access via the menu system and remote control. When you switch on the device, the screen will show you the current file type, connection type, volume and sampling rate. The volume wheel is very smooth and it has clicks. Each click increases or decreases the volume by 0.5 dB. The volume wheel also has a secondary function and it acts as a menu button when pressed. The menu is quite extensive, but fortunately very well structured and easy to learn. Input option allows you to select one of the six inputs, which are USB-C, Bluetooth, Optical 1, Coaxial 1, Optical 2 and Coaxial 2. The output menu option allows you to configure the device outputs. PCM filter options allows you to cycle between seven built-in deck filters. HPA gain option allows you to switch between low and high gain modes. Sound color option is a fun way to change the sound and there are 10 different presets that you can experiment with. The pre-mode option allows you to switch the line outputs between a fixed volume or a variable volume that you can control with the volume knob. The FM key function allows you to change what the FM button on the remote will do. The PLL option allows you to set a jitter. USB mode option switches the device between USC 1 and USC 2. The UI style option lets you to switch between two UI styles, the universal one and graphics one. I prefer the universal one myself. Dimmer option allows you to set a screen timeout in seconds. Brightness option allows you to set the display brightness. And the last function on the menu is a reset, which eventually resets the device to the factory defaults. Now let's talk about the sound. Before we start, I need to mention that I don't believe that DAX can have a significant impact on the sound. However, the amplifier section of the DAX can still introduce some changes to the sound. To me, RAW MDA1 sounds organic, natural and transparent, with a solid black background and no coloration to the sound. The balanced headphone output on the front panel is for convenience only, which means it doesn't provide additional power, but is handy in case you already have headphones and IEMs with the 4.4mm cable termination. With all of my IEMs, I have run the unit in the low gain mode. With demonic IEMs and quiet recordings, I rarely increased the volume past minus 16 dB, and I still had a lot of headroom left. I also didn't notice any audible distortion or noise with sensitive IEMs, which was good too. The next important aspect was how it would drive my full-size headphones. I tried it with about 10 different headphones I had at hand while making this review. And the headphones were ranging from 16 to 300 ohms. The RAW MDA1 has driven most of my sensitive full-size headphones in the low gain mode with ease. Testing the unit with 250 and 300 ohm dynamic headphones and the low sensitivity planar magnetic ones required switching the unit to the high gain mode, as there was not much headroom left in the low gain mode. In the high gain mode, I rarely increased the volume past minus 14 dB and I still had some power left to drive my demanding headphones to absurd levels of volume. Overall, RAW MDA1 has shown fantastic results and has driven all the pairs in my tests with authority, providing great dynamics, sound realism, wonderful instrument separation and a fantastic detail retrieval. So what do I like about this device? A good build, dual ES 9039Q2M chips with impressive performance, transparent and natural sound presentation, solid black background, two gain modes, a lot of output power, 6.3mm and 4.4mm headphone outputs, remote control, RCA and XLR line outputs, Bluetooth connectivity including LDAC support, 4 digital inputs, built-in power supply and a fantastic price to performance ratio. What I didn't like? Well, I don't think this unit has any real cons. But if you want me to be very picky, I will mention that I would prefer a metal volume knob instead of plastic one and a more slick front panel without the protruding display, but that's just me. 
I think RAW MDA1 is an ideal all-in-one solution no matter if you are looking for your first advanced desktop deck and headphone amplifier or if you have several other devices with digital outputs and you need to have a single deck amplifier component in your system. To me it strikes the perfect balance between price, performance, flexibility and output power. With all the features and connectivity options it brings to the table, I think it's an amazing desktop deck and amplifier, and I can highly recommend it. And that concludes my review for today. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for future updates. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, goodbye.